Good morning and welcome to today's edition of After Press. It's still breakfast time right here on Plus TV Africa. And joining me to discuss all of the newspaper headlines today, I have political uh, analyst uh, Bolao Olojade. Good to have you join us and happy Eid al Fitr celebrations. How was yesterday for you? Beautiful. Uh, an opportunity to do a little bit of rest. Mm and um, say hello to a couple of friends. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay, let's get into the business of the day. Now we begin with this day newspaper. And the biggest story, Buhari to intervene as APC Oyegun's bickering worsens. And we have multiple riders here as well. Party attacks from a chairman exonerates Oshiomole. And don't drag us into your crisis. That's the PDP responding there. And to the top of the newspaper, wonder concerns mount over non-release of forensic report. SEC executives meet today of a court order and plan their next move. And reports list ways to halt medical tourism. Brain drain, the say, page 8. And coming down to the lower part of the newspaper, Nigeria, Jesse, US to share $268 million abacha loot and... Court also summons Femi Bajabi Amila for alleged uh, perjury. And we see here the pictorial. Shipping gurus, the, from the left to the right, we have the DJ of Nemasa, Dr. Dakoku Pitesai, the CEO of United Nations Global uh, Compact as well, Liz Kingo, and an official of Day North Verit uh, Veritas. And that's also Bjorn Hogland during the North Shipping Conference and exhibition in Oslo, Norway, just yesterday. Now, let's start with uh, the president expected to intervene between the back and forth that we've had between Oyegu as well, Chief John Odige Oyegu as well as uh, the APC, with a particular focus on the leadership style of um, the national chairman, Adam Sushomole. Mm. The, it's, 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 uh, it's an issue that should not be allowed to fester. Mm. Um, the party has suffered greatly in the last election. The APC suffered a lot. You have Rivers, you have Zamfara, you have a lot of so other many inter divides. internal crises. Mm. And that is because, in, in, in most people's opinion, which is also my own opinion, um, Oshio Mole does not have that political capacity for political negotiations. He's an activist at heart. And he brings that activism into things that do not require activism. Mm. So the way he will say things, the way he will come across to people, things that require that you sit down with your members and discuss and judge or and find a solution, you would rather dole out orders. Mm. It doesn't work in the political scene. However, there's something for which Oshomole must be given credit. Party discipline. Mm. In the days of Oyego, I can assure you that he's the candidate of the Ogun State governor that will have been APC, that will have flew the APC flag. He will have been the son-in-law of Okorocha that will have competed in the governorship election for APC in the days of Oyego. Mm. So there is something about the party supremacy and discipline that Shomole has brought. In fact, people were insulting even the president in the days of Oyego. Mm. You know, so that party discipline, he brought it on board. However, he sacrificed the other soft side of things, a political engagement and all the rest. Neither, in my opinion, neither Oyego nor Shomole is a, is, a, is, a, is a fit for that role. And what would you, you need say someone that to cuts this? across, that can maintain a firm position on discipline, at the same time has the capacity to engage with mm. people. Okay, well, let's now cross over to Vanguard newspaper, APC Crisis, the latest, impunity marked your era. That's according to the, uh, that's according to Oyegu, APC Blasting Oyegu, and they say, feel free to join PDP, APC scribe tells aggrieved members, and be humble, ask for secret of my success. Oyegu says that there, and face yourself inflicted woes, PDP replies, APC. And in the pictorial below, we also see the Ido Fitter uh, prayers. We see President Muhammad Buhari, his son, and other uh, Muslim faithful there during the prayers yesterday. Nigeria will overcome security challenges soon. That's according to IBB, and page 8 has details there. And 3.4 billion Naira fraud, Sanusi Ganduje Great as Kanu Commission recommends Emir suspension. Page 13 has details as well. UK seizes 82 billion Naira Abacha loot. Page 35 also has details. And presidential task force begins operation at Mile 2 Axis. Page 10. And Arawa youth back Ojikalu for deputy Senate president. Page 15. 
And talking about the minimum wage, uh, the minimum wage, how states can avert trouble. Uh, Minister of Labor and Employment Igigi says they page 42 and Nigeria is under attack. That according to Cardinal Okoje and Sala, I will secure Abuja residents despite voting against me, page 8. And that's a statement from President Muhammad Dubari and talking business shareholders condemn sex action against Wando. That's talking business in page 9. Now, um, the president's message, let's focus on that now. Page 8 has details there and it says I'll secure Abuja residents despite voting against me. That's the question it everybody It doesn't asks. have an option. As a matter of fact, that's where he lives as well. So it's in his own interest to secure Abuja. But apart from that, it's also a politically incorrect statement to make. It's unnecessary, unwarranted. Everybody knows that once you assume that role, you are father to everybody. Mm -hmm. So the issue of some people did not vote for you or some people voted for you, it, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't come, come, come about at all. So and, it's, it's a misplaced statement. It's unnecessary. And do you think in this second term of office, we'll see other instances where the president's disposition might not necessarily sit well? Because if he's expected to be president of all and has been accused on different instances of being lopsided in his appointment, do you think people would also raise this as... I, I think the second term should be better. There, 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 there are lessons from the first one, which I believe he will have taken on board. At the same time, that is not to say that it will not make slips that it's not supposed to make, that it will not say things that are, uh, it's not supposed to, uh, to say. Hmm. You know, it's just it's, it's for the handlers to continue to groom him in certain commentaries. It, it, it doesn't speak much anyway. But occasionally when he speaks, he might say the wrong thing. This is an unnecessary comment, for example. And he's also told, his, uh, he tells leaders as well and supporters, don't make my government unpopular by complaining. <laughs> There's nothing they can do about that. Are, if people are not happy about one thing, they will complain. It's mm. for him to take it on board and see what are the lessons and how can I be better for it. That's, that's it. Okay, now we shift focus to the Punch newspaper reactions as UK seizes fresh 82 billion Naira Abacha loot. And looking down here, we see pictorials, different Muslim faithful praying and thanking Allah for the Eid celebrations after a successful Ramadan fasting and prayer period. And going down, federal government list Adadivo, Kudurat Abiola, others for Hall of Fame, page 10 has details. Confusion as land grabbers unleash Oro deity on Ogun community. Page 4 and page 5 has details there, and federal government begins 2020 budget preparation once against inflation cost. Page 25 has details. And corrupt customs office, officers, smugglers, killing uh, local rice production. Uh, that's according to uh, customs controller Ali over there, and the Kitty Assembly orders suspended council chairman to refund 3.6 billion naira. Page 18 has details there. And APC says Oyegun condoned indiscipline as part of chairman. That's still ongoing between Oyegun as well as Adam Sushomale, page 19. And NLC experts lambast federal government over high real projects cost, page 25. What's your reaction to the loot being seized? 82 billion naira by Isn't the UK government. amazing that 21 years after Abacha died, mm. we're still recovering part of his loot. OBJ recovered some, the government that followed recovered some, this government that recovered mm -hmm. quite a little. Why are our people this bad? Why would someone decide to just steal your country blind? So that 20 years after you've been dead, they're still recovering the money. Some would say if you never put checks in place, then you should expect that these loopholes will be exploited. Hey, well, he was a soldier. There, nobody, if you dare question, I mean, I, on, on the same page we were celebrating mm. Kodira Tabela, we all knew what happened during that era. I worked with a media house during that era that was shut down for more than a year. So what are we talking about? Mm. You know, but it's it, it, it just that we as Nigerians, because it's not as if this stealing has stopped. Okay, now, but until Jersey, uh, the U.S. and Nigeria come to an, an agreement on how this we money is, the money. we wouldn't get the money. So even the, even the Western countries, we need to, I mean, they need to ask questions. It's, stolen money is easy to identify. So they know you were stealing money right from the beginning. They kept it, they've used this money, they've had the benefit of this money for 20 years, and they're still asking questions, they even want to share part what of the money. What do you expect from Mr. President now? 
engagement. There's nothing you can do. The money is not in a sense. It's in those guys, and they can decide to stretch it for the next 20 years if they want. So apart from the court part of things, you also need to engage the soft side of issues. Engage and see that we get this money. Mm. And for him who is doing anti-corruption, we don't have to look back at how we can get onto the preventive side of things mm. rather than chasing money after they have left our shores. This is part of chasing money that has been stolen. 20 years after, you're still after it. Mm -hmm. But prevent it, make it unattractive or near impossible, or you know, make it to the barest minimum for people not to be able to steal in the first instance. Once they steal, to get the money back, is a whole lot of work. Okay, and the federal government is also beginning the preparations for the 2020 budget. We... Yeah, that's, that, that, that's nice. And they won <laughs> against um, inflating personnel costs. But one would say, yes, this is a good step in the right direction, but we've never seen strong implementation of budgets. We've always seen delays here and there. Excuses being given for the delays as well. You look at even Mr. President also pointing to the 8th National Assembly with the delay of our budget as well. But what do you think? To what extent now should we consolidate on this effort, really? Um, we, we legally, we run a financial year that is January to December. But the, the last budget was just signed in mm -hmm. May. So the, the month, the year is halfway gone. It is absolutely unacceptable that between the executive and the legislators, we don't have a budget when we're supposed to have it. It's a failure on their part. So maybe starting early enough is something that could help us achieve that. And the president has also spoken about the issue of uh, insertions and deletions by the National mm -hmm. Assembly, uh, which he hoped to have an, a proper engagement with the new leadership of the Assembly. Mm -hmm. this, because these are things that will ensure that you can actually perform on that budget that you're supposed to do. See, if somebody inserts an item that has not been properly costed into the budget, what it means is that you cannot even execute it. Well, the crux of the matter now lies with the Ninth National Assembly as they exactly assume the executive has role. a huge role too. Because if you're going to give someone a budget and you want him to approve it, you have to give it to him on time. Mm. When he calls people to come and defend, the people should appear before him to defend on time. So the executive the and the legislature must work agencies. together mm. to ensure that Nigeria can have value for budget. Mm. Okay, and moving on now to the Nation newspaper. We see the pictorial here, also Muslim faithful. You see Femi Bajabia Amila as well, and other key is Muslim that not funny? faithful. There was a publication that is, a, is an elder in one church. <laughs> <laughs> um, during the Edo Fitro celebrations and the prayers held yesterday. And Oshomele, cleaning your mess, APC replies Oyegun, ex-chairman, handed over party without blemish, says the aide. And uh, stakeholders slam sec over Wando. And moving on to the top of the newspaper, the nation driver abducted in River State, page 5, has details there, sadly. And Shibajo, Nigeria, set for breakthrough. And Salah Buratai, air chief, visits troops. And Nigeria's Bande is United Nations General Assembly President. Et al. I $750 million from Africa Units IPO, page 11, has details there. And talking sports, Super Eagles impress raw in training. And inside the newspaper, ACF backs Cali for Deputy Senate President and Fiamy signs eight bills. Page 40 has details there. But let's talk about the Vice President saying that Nigeria is on the brink of um, getting a breakthrough. And we also have IBB saying that um, very soon, very, very soon, the security challenges will be a thing of the past. Are they just mere words or uh, we have evidence to back it up? I, I, I think the nation has been on the brink of a, a, a breakthrough for as long as my entire adult life of consciousness, you know. So it's a, it's a So thing. there's nothing new. We are there's, on the verge, but we never new. break through. We just did it. We never get to that point where we make it happen. Nigeria has a huge potential, huge, huge. But it has remained a potential. Mm. Just do it is what I would tell Mr. Mr. Vice President. Let's just make it happen. It's not enough to talk about it. Let's do what we can do to make it happen. And it says the rhetoric of division mustn't supersede national uh, unity. So many have also said this time around it's the, the onus lies of, on the Buhari-led administration to show that they are the unifying element this time around because these cracks will continue to be exploited, explored, until we can no longer even hold ourselves together. I, I, I believe um, they, they, they have a duty. 
And, but the, the, the duty, apart from unifying, because there, there are several ways to unify the country. Part of it is also to allow them to develop at their own rate. So which takes us back to that, whether you call it fiscal federalism, whether you call it uh, um, restructuring, whatever we need to do to ensure. Look at Lagos State that wants to do power project, and you say they cannot do it. If they, Lagos State want to do 3,000 plus megawatt of energy. But they cannot do it under the existing law. Mm. So those kind, of, those kind of things, we must deal with it. I'm, I'm, I'm happy about some things that are in the media, about uh, uh, local government funding directly, for example, is a very good step. Another one about um, state police or local government mm. police is a fantastic step in the right uh, direction. That's if still we a can make it happen. It's a, no, no, it's a recommendation. Even the direct funding of local government has not happened. It's going to happen in June for the first time. Mm. And people are already in court. So there are a lot of hurdles along the way, from legislation through to implementation. But at least the idea is here in the open, and we're we talking about it. We can mm. take steps. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And OK, so Nigeria's uh, Mohamed Bande is also emerged the United Nations General Assembly uh, president-elect. Now, uh, the UN General Assembly has also said, well, he deserves this opportunity to serve. And once again, Nigeria comes on the front line. We have a representative here. What are your expectations this time around, really? Uh, the, 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 if there are issues that require uh, the body, the United Nations body. We have uh, a strong pedestal to stand and negotiate and discuss and push matters that has to do with Nigeria. With a focus well, on see, especially the implementation of the 2030 um, SDGs as well. Well, you see, the bulk of that will still now come back to us here. We have to take our own action because the ordinary man on the road is not bothered about these things you're talking about. It's not bothered about somebody as UN General mm. Assembly. It will be, be like, okay, so exactly how does it, what does it translate to for me? Mm. And it's difficult to explain. That's the truth. Mm. Mm. And the other focus, some are saying that peace and security, poverty, um, eradication, zero hunger, quality, education, climate, um, action, and inclusion. Those we are see, SDG things. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We see. Um, as a government, we understand all of this language, but when it comes to implementation, we don't see anything going on there. So possibly, now that we have another Nigerian there, hopefully I mean, it will be a closer we'll sing call the song to home. more clearly. And we'll, then mm, we uh, have the conversation strongly hard here in Nigeria. we're going to get whatever support we need from the body as well. Mm, so Exactly. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, voila, it's been a pleasure having you, and hopefully we have tea time once again right <laughs> here as we talk about the headlines on the National Dailies. Thank you very much and do have a great holiday. Thank you. Good to well, be here. Well, this is where the cookie crumbles on today's edition of Off the Press. Make sure you stay abreast with all of the news, making the headlines with Plus TV Africa. Stay tuned for the rest of our programming. I'm David Alabi.